How's it going folks? In this week's video we'll be looking at the mineralizing tank that I used to reclaim some nutrients for the system. Also be looking at some new starts and how I'll be protecting them from insects. Just behind me there if you haven't realized already. And at the end we'll have a bit of a gander at how I'm preparing the fish so they're ready for harvest in a couple of weeks time. So to begin with I'll give you a bit of a uh, rough look at how the beds are going. The ginger's starting to get a little bit of dieback even though there is some um, fresh growth coming on. We harvested the remaining beetroot from this bed yesterday to make room for some more starts and you might notice we got some poles here but I'll cover more of that in a little while. We do have some pest pressure still. We have caterpillars that are munching on the basil. They were leaving the uh, beetroot alone for some reason but they've decided to um, have a bit of a feed on them. I'll give you a bit of a quick look at Bianca's little green onion or shallot garden. I know sometimes us Aussies call them shallots but they, I think most people know them as green onions. These are just little sections that Bianca uh, planted out after using the majority of the plant up in the evening meal. A quick look at this little bed over here which doesn't get shown much anymore. It's got some water chestnuts in there as well as some nasturtium which you can obviously see. And we have some remnant of the sweet potato that I harvested from the dual root zone soil pouch that was in this bed. So if you're interested in seeing that one, how that system works, you have a bit of a gander up there. And I'm actually hoping, fingers crossed, it's a bit of a jungle in there, but um, we might get a tuber, a tuber or two from the sweet potato just growing in the clay down the bottom there. It is getting very, very thick and it's a bit hard to see in there. But when that happens, when we clean this bed out and harvest the water chestnuts and see if there's any sweet potato. Oh, and there is also. You can see up here some ginger. We do have some ginger growing in a dual root zone bag in there as well. So when it comes time to clean this bed out, uh, once the plants start dying off in winter, yeah, I'll bring you along and give you a bit of a gander at the harvest. So I'm um, just thinking I'm going to let this sweet potato go for now. Yeah, you never know what we might turn up in the end. This other bed over here we'll look at in a bit greater detail later on. And this last bed over here has Grandma Ahe Amarillo chili in it. We've still got some more fresh ones on there. And we have a couple that I'm just letting dry out for seeds. A couple of green ones still coming on. I haven't seen any flowers. Actually, I just said that and I looked up and what's up here? But another flower under this leaf. So um, I, we might get some chilies through winter. I'm fairly sure though it'll die back a bit. Uh, just quickly, you might see some signs of deficiency in the leaves here. I have a feeling we had a slight iron deficiency a couple of weeks back, but you can tell by the new growth, she's looking pretty good now. Yeah, a couple of buds down there. I'll oh, just quickly too, the reason you can tell it's an iron deficiency because it's on the newer leaves. If it was a magnesium deficiency, it would be on the older leaves because the plant can move magnesium around where um, iron is pretty much all just locked in one position. Around here we have the um, perennial leeks, bits and pieces of them we have been harvesting uh, just to throw in uh, stir fries and things like that. But I think I'm going to take the rest of them out, put them in a uh, pouch. Uh, the Hohenock is doing really well. This plant here is a really good canary in the coal mine, so to speak. It shows deficiencies very, very quickly. It's actually a plant uh, that is used a lot in Vietnamese um, herbal medicine as well as culinary. It's just basically a green. People also make tea from the leaves. I just pretty much will just rip it off and throw it in salads and bits and pieces like that. And around the corner here, we have our aloe vera. Uh, which has just happened to throw up a flower spike over the last week or so. So that one there will be getting a bit of a trim back. I'll be taking that large section over the back there and probably some of these ones here. Um, just to leave it just down to probably just this piece here because they can actually take over the bed quite quickly. Now with this bed here, I'm not going to cover that just now, what we're planning out and what I've done there. I thought what I'd do is quickly give you a run through on the mineralization drum because I've had a few people ask. Now what we have here is basically a drum and it is full of bubbling fish waste. It's all the solids that are taken out from the radial flow settler. Uh, just that blue filter drum or settler drum over there. They are pumped into this and you can see it's bubbling away nicely. There is actually a series of air stones down the bottom and they've <laughs> been altered slightly because they had some air issues. They were basically clogging up and not providing much oxygenation whatsoever. So I pulled one of the stones off and she looks to be bubbling very well now. Now the reason it is bubbling is because we need to provide the bacteria in there with oxygen 
and also a carbon source, which I'll cover in a minute, so they can break down the organic matter to make the elements available for the plants to take up. And now the way it works is two to three hours before I clean out the radial flow settler, I turn the air pump off, all the solids or the bulk of them settle out towards the bottom, and then I can decant off just under half the barrel worth of nutrient rich water pop that back into the aquaponic grow bed so the plants can make use of those elements. And to fill it back up, all we do is hook a hose on the pump connected to the radial flow settler, and that brings the solids rich water over here to the mineralization drum. Chuck in a small amount of carbon rich uh, feed for the bacteria, and that helps provide energy to the bacteria so they can convert the solids. And then it just bubbles away again until the next time I need to clean the radial flow settler and we repeat the process. So it is a pretty basic little system. Um, you can um, check out Rob's over on Bigelow Brook Farm. He's got one that's actually in line with his system. So yeah, just a little bit of an explanation. I've just had a, a number of comments in underneath videos. So I thought, uh, yeah, I'd answer them in this one to help you folks out. So now I'll run through what these um, tent poles are doing here. Uh, basically, like that little uh, setup over there, I'm going to create a roof that goes over the top of the bed out of this concrete reinforcing mesh. I'm going to pop that up there, uh, secure a couple of battens across for it to sit on first, but that will just sit on top and that will make a nice flat tall roof that I won't bump into that I can run some insect netting over the top of to protect our winter brassicas. What will be going in this bed is some bok choy that you'll see in a minute. Now I can't set this one up at the moment. I haven't cut the battens, but I have the material, but I've given away so much of my insect netting. I'm actually pinching a little bit back from my sister. Thank you very much, Gina. And I'll be setting this one up over the weekend. Uh, the bok choy might just stay in their little safe house over there until that point in time. What I'll do is I'll go around the other side and give you a closer look at how I set this one up. So just to show you quickly as we get in there, I've got these little sections of irrigation pipe. I've just um, cut short sections, about an inch, a little bit over an inch in length, and just cut a slit down there. And they make great little clips to hold on shade cloth around the place. Just get inside here. And what we have is the tent peg. Come around to this side where it's not so glary. What we have is a tent post that is secured to the grow bed. And then we have this little bit of top hat batten. This is something I've used a lot in the greenhouses down the back, especially that big one that we've taken down recently. And then over the top, I've got this little bit of a security grill, and that just basically forms a roof to support the shade cloth so it doesn't fall down onto the plants. Now, over the top of the spikes on the top of the tent posts, I've just got these little um, probiotic things that Bianca has. I've just chopped off the, the bottom of it and popped it over the top there because I don't want the shade cloth to um, be pulled through that. Now that's all wired on there and it's basically given us a nice big wide area that we can work in while at the same time stopping the white cabbage butterfly and the other moths we have issues with coming in here and yeah basically destroying our crop. I do have a few other plants I'll be leaving in here. We've got the awesome oregano over there or oregano. We have our mushroom herb in the back corner. They had a massive cutback the other day, some red vein sorrel, and I'm just letting this little section of mushroom herb go. It's got some roots in the bed. I'm going to transplant that out somewhere else in the patch. And over here we have some sweet potato. This is just some slips that I started off in here from the um, dual root zone one. They're actually coming out very soon and they will go into a wicking um, barrel, which you guys will see in another garden update video if you watch them as well. And as you can see, we still have pests in here, blooming caterpillar, uh, grasshopper. Oh, there we go. We might feed him to the fish quickly. Who's up for some tucker? Yep, there he goes. Back into our little broccoli safe haven here. Now, as you can see, it is very tall, a lot of space to move around in here. I'm fairly tall, I'm just over six foot, so I definitely didn't want to be banging my head into these sharp sections, so I have made it nice and tall. I was actually contemplating doing the hoop style, just using some irrigation pipe to create a hoop house over the top. And while that would have worked, it would have kept the butterflies and the moths away from the plants. I think just having this netting here that can be moved out from the sides a bit as the um, plants grow will do a much better job at keeping the butterflies out. But the leaves can actually just push this netting out of the way and I can secure it down the bottom there, uh, just down on the base runner of the bed so no butterflies can fly up there. And I've never had any issues with the butterflies laying eggs through this insect netting so I think we should be pretty safe there and that's just a little patch job I had to do yesterday. So that's enough yabbering on about that. Uh, we'll plan out these broccoli now. So I purchased these seedlings when they only had their seed leaves actually. I think there's three to four, some of them may even have five in there. 
So what I'm going to do is just plant them as six individual cells. The reason being is I'm eating a lot more greens uh, recently. I've changed what I eat a little bit. And then probably one plant from every one of these six will let go to a full size head and the others will just be sacrificial along the way. And if they give me little heads, I'll, yeah, I'll take that as a bit of a bonus. So I've just pulled this insect netting back. So hopefully no butterflies or moths get in here while I'm doing this. Now, I, I won't be shaking off the soil from the base of these starts. I have in previous videos, but um, I've found that generally the roots, especially these ones, because there's so many of them, tend to hold the soil in there. And I'm not really overly concerned if a, a few little bits of soil get into the bed. So that's the first one in. Pop the next one over the back here as well. And there's the next victim or plug. This one here is actually going to interflare with the inlet a little bit. Another one over here. And the last one round about here. There we go. Pretty much all as easy as that. These guys here I won't be planning out today because I want the shade cloth from my sister first. So I'm just going to dig down to the water level. Pop them there and just fill them back around it. We'll keep those guys nice and hydrated. So these little clips are really good. Like I can just pop that wherever I want, help hold this up while I was planting them out. Pull it down, pull this side around and we'll clip this one. Actually, I'll get the others from inside out first. We'll just pop this one on here, keep that together. And then around the corner here, I'm just gonna pull some of this back and hopefully I'm not pulling the camera over. And just to show you as well, you don't need to actually clip this onto something. I could bunch some of this up here and grab this little clip, put him around in there like that. And there we go. A nice secure seal there so no butterfly can get in behind it. So just before we feed these little fellows here and have a chat about harvesting them, I just thought I'd remind you folks who may be new to the channel or you folks who are undecided yet, that I do have that backyard aquaponics guide for beginners. There will be a link down in the description and one will pop up here somewhere. It's pretty much all the cheapest guide you're going to get for you folks starting out in aquaponics who want to know what it's about, what the components are used for, how to build a small system, how to run a small system, and there's always being bits and pieces added to it. At the moment I'm working on a download for the Bell Siphon, was planning to have it available this weekend, but it will be added in the future. And as I um, create more content to put on the guide, you get it for free, no extra to pay. Uh, once you pay for the initial cost, that's pretty much all it. It's also available in Spanish, Portuguese, Hindi, and Chinese for you folks who uh, may not understand my Australian accent too well and don't have English as a first language. So enough spruiking of that. Uh, we'll grab some pellets and toss them in for the fish. I thought I'd just mention quickly what sort of feed I use too, by the way. This is made by Ridley's here in Australia. It's an Aussie made fish food. Um, we basically use a commercial grade one in aquaponics because these are a table fish and stuff like this has all the nutrients they need. So that's why we pretty much will use this. And now this is probably going to be the last feed they get for about a week, uh, maybe a week and a half, because I'd like to purge the fish before I harvest a couple. Uh, the, the idea behind that is, is basically there are some com um, compounds that the fish take up that can spoil the flavour of the meat. We have had fish we've harvested in the past after they've been purged for a week or two and they tasted absolutely fine. No off freshwater fish taste. So I haven't done it with the jades as of yet. So I thought I'd do it properly this time. No feed for a week or so. And then yeah, we'll uh, pull one or two out and we'll see what they taste like. For you folks who haven't subscribed but do want to check out the harvest video when the time comes, you can hit that subscribe button down there, jump on over to the bell icon and hopefully YouTube will send you a notification when that video or any other aquaponic or backyard farm video gets uploaded to the channel. It'd be great to see you come along. I always like to say good day to folks down in the comments section. Before I go, Huge thanks to those folks who are helping to support the channel by various means, uh, buying the guide. I'm really enjoying using the uh, chat function of the guide and helping you folks out who have a couple of questions. Many thanks to the folks who are supporting us through the YouTube membership program. Also our own patron at Farm Your Own Yard website. Thank you very much, folks. And all you guys who I chat to all the time who come along and say good day in the comments section. Now, if you have found this video or any of my other videos helpful, it'd be fantastic if you could share them around social media. Maybe give a couple of tips to your friends who are on different aquaponics social groups. But I'll stop rambling on. I do hope you're all well and happy in your gardens and aquaponics is booming. And I'll catch you next video. Cheers, folks, and happy growing.